Well, it's Halloween. So to celebrate, I decided to check out the new Scooby-Doo movie, Return to Zombie Island. And what better way to celebrate than with cereal? You know, as a kid, I always used to eat my cereal with milk. But I'm not a kid anymore. Now we have beer! Tune tour of mysteries? Hey, I think I remember these. I got a few of them in cereal boxes when I was a kid. Scooby-Doo and the Toon Tour of Mysteries was a collection of five CD-ROMs that came packaged in boxes of Kellogg's cereal and other Keebler products. They were a crossover with then-currently popular Cartoon Network shows, and the episodes featured involved some form of mystery. Each package came with one of the five discs, and if you wanted all five, the boxes also came with a form that you could send in to get them all. Does anybody actually remember when cereal boxes gave out prizes? I don't see it too often anymore. It started in 1906 when W.K. Kellogg decided to begin putting surprise toys, books, and all sorts of things inside of boxes of cereal. I couldn't find anything specifically on when they started distributing CDs or DVDs, except for the strange article about how apparently General Mills put a CD-ROM copy of the Bible in over 12 million cereal boxes. Huh. Anyway, I found something very interesting here. The only article I found that says when these came out is from a website called tviv.org, and they say that they came out in June 2004. But if I try to go to the exact date with Wayback Machine, looking on Kellogg's website shows nothing during the month of June advertising Scooby-Doo. Just a lot about SpongeBob and Spider-Man. However, I did check July of 2004, and I managed to find a small tab that says Scooby-Doo DVD. It won't let me see anything on this page, however, if I go ahead almost a whole year to April 26, 2005, it will let me see it. The only thing on here is a picture resembling another picture that's easily accessible on the web, but not exactly the same. The names above the tents slash attractions are different, and in different font with logos. I also found this pretty easily online. It's a screen cap from what looks to be for the eyes of marketing companies only, but listen to this. The mystery. Customer loyalty turned up missing from Kellogg's products and agency detectives were on the case. The evidence. The search for five unique Scooby-Doo mystery DVD-ROMs promoted multiple purchases across Kellogg's portfolio. With hundreds of prizes at large, kids continuously returned to register and win online. Scooby-centric POS, online, on-air, and on-package support created excitement at retail, proving Kellogg's fun doesn't stop at the bottom of the cereal bowl. Case closed. Sales rose 52%, profits increased 38%, there were more than 6 million website hits, and POS orders doubled. The agency cracked the code. And to think customer loyalty would have escaped too, if it hadn't been for us meddling marketers. If you look down at the pop display, you'll notice that they were even offering people a chance to win a mystery machine minivan. If you look at the web presence picture to the right, it specifies that it's a Mazda MPV. I tried to look online to see if anyone had actually won this, or if there were at least any images of it online. While I did find a lot of cool fan-made mystery machines, I did not find any official Mazda MPV mystery machine out there. I guess that's another lost piece of media history. 
Something that is interesting to note is that during October of 2004, Kellogg's was doing a separate Scooby-Doo sweepstakes involving the new Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed movie. This sweepstakes was titled Kellogg's Scooby-Doo Online Game. What's interesting to note is that it states that the grand prize would be delivered by none other than Scooby-Doo himself. How could they promise that? Imagine hearing a knock at your door one day and just see Scooby-Doo giving you $3,000 worth of television equipment. You know, it's funny. I, I almost remember entering to win this contest. But I, I don't think I won anything, though. Hmm. So it starts with this intro that seems to be an original rendition of What's New Scooby-Doo. I guess Simple Plan was unavailable to come back for these Kellogg's DVDs? It doesn't sound bad, though. I could honestly jam to this. We get to the main menu as the mystery machine pulls up and we see a lot of different icons. Starting from the left, we have a souvenir shop, a fortune teller's place, and Midway Arcade. On the right side, we have a fun house and web museum. We'll get to all these later. Let's start with the eerie looking mansion here in the middle. Inside, we find ourselves with a very scary, scary, not scary at all situation with three main doors, each featuring episodes from popular Cartoon Network shows. We also have a fourth door on the left leading to bonus content. To cut the suspense, all the bonus content room has in it are Cartoon Network music videos, also known as Groovies, a Cartoon Network blooper video, which seems to be bumpers and promos that aired on Cartoon Network, featuring characters having outtakes. And lastly, the mystery riddle section, featuring some fat pig and a uh, horse, zebra, giraffe, whatever thing, named Eat and Earn. Eat and Earn are apparently some mascots for different Kellogg cereals. Anyway, if we do the mystery riddle, it asks you a multiple choice question. Answer the question right, and you get a bonus code to put in online. Answer the question wrong, and it just asks you to try again. It also has some commercials for Cartoon Network and whatever brand was sponsoring with Kellogg's at the time. So now let's get into the actual episodes here. Scooby and the gang installed this new satellite mystery locator that allows them to find mysteries from all over. And they picked up readings from whoever is in need of help. So, since the cover of Disc 1 is Johnny Bravo, I can only assume he's the episode behind the Solve the Mystery door, so we'll save that for last. First up on Disc 1 is the Powerpuff Girls episode, Film Flam. Without going into too much detail, the episode is mainly about some director trying to make a Powerpuff Girls movie with tons of merchandise. Long story short, the director is actually disguising the filming as a bank heist, and he ends up getting found out by the professor and the girls save the day. Up next is the episode Trick or Treehouse from Dexter's Laboratory. After getting mad that she continuously gets kicked out of Dexter's room, Dee Dee decides to make a treehouse where Dexter is not allowed to go in. Dexter is now curious to find out what's inside her oh-so-secret treehouse. Dexter finds nothing but a trap, as he's now stuck in her treehouse and Dee Dee is free to make a mess in his lab. And to end off Disc 1 is the Johnny Bravo crossover episode, Bravo Dooby Doo. Which is kind of unfair, because I know that this is the only episode Scooby Doo has ever crossed over with any other Cartoon Network show, so this kind of makes Disc 1, I don't know about the best since that's subjective, but at least it means Disc 1 makes the most sense. Anyway, this episode follows Johnny Bravo as he's looking for his aunt Jebedissa and stumbles upon Scooby and his gang. They agree to help him find her, only to be obstructed by a big, spooky old man dressed as a farmer. In the end, though, it's revealed that that was just Aunt Jebedissa herself. At the end, it asks you a question about the episode you just watched to solve the mystery, and then it has an advertisement for Cartoon Network. Now that the episodes are over, let's take a look at what else we got here. First, let's start at the Funhouse. In here, it looks like we can download some official Cartoon Network wallpapers and other things, such as Dorklings. Pretty cool. The next thing is some fun house mirror with the Eat and Earn characters having different poses. Oh hey, what's that Ed's doing there? Apparently we have a Toon Stash. In each area, there are select Cartoon Network characters 
hidden for you to find. And by hidden, I mean in plain sight. They're so easy to find. If we go back in the mansion, we'll find Dee Dee. So we found two, now we just need four more. If you get all six, they give you an unlockable character in the Cartoon Orbit game, which unfortunately you can no longer play on their website. Let's check out the Web Museum. Oh look, there's Johnny Bravo to add to our Toon Stash. There's a bunch of links to different websites for us to check out, but most of them are either dead links or they just lead you to the current version of that website. Now we're heading to the Souvenir Shop. Let's add the Powerpuff Girls to our Toon Stash. Here we have more links, but unlike before, these actually lead to some stuff. The Cartoon Network link gets you some Scooby-Doo wallpapers, and the Alaskan Airlines link actually brings you to the Kellogg's sponsor coupon. Inside the fortune teller's place, we find Dexter to add to our Toon Stash, and the only thing in here is another eat and earn minigame, but this time where Earn tries to predict your future. And finally, we have the Midway Arcade, where we're greeted by the kids next door to add to our Toon Stash, as well as a title baiting you to test your skills on a set of games that I'm fairly certain don't work anymore. Power Play Games is a dead link, so that's not a great start here. The Apple Jacks link just brings you to their website where you can buy their cereal online. Then we have the Eat and Earn Mystery Riddles, in which they ask one Scooby-Doo question. And here we go to try the games, Mojo Jojo's Clone Zone and Princess Snorbucks. Let's click one and try it. Can't wait to see the error messages this is gonna bring up. <laughs> they work? Um, yeah, so apparently they work. We're starting here with the demo version of Mojo Jojo's Clone Zone. It starts off with the Powerpuff Girls being bored and doing their normal daily routine that doesn't involve crime fighting. Also, is Buttercup missing an arm here? Mojo Jojo is also bored and comes up with a plan to clone himself to take over Townsville. He sends his clones into the city and begins wreaking havoc all over. There's a news bulletin on TV and the girls decide they need to split up to cover more ground. Blossom takes the skyscrapers in downtown, Bubbles goes up to the local dump, and Buttercup goes to Town Hall. Before leaving, the professor stops them and gives them a communicator, just in case they need help. He's pretty much this game's version of a help mechanic. Given that this is the demo version, the only playable level is the Blossom stage where we head into downtown. It's honestly a fun little minigame where you use math to crush these satellites and block in the Mojo Jojo clone, beat him up, and collect memory chips. Eventually, you get two clones who go in there. I'm not sure how long this lasts, but I only made it up to stage 12. Next up is the demo version of Princess Snorbucks. The game starts unlike the other one and just begins with the girls asleep in bed having dreams. Because this is the demo version, we can only play the Bubbles level. Her dream is about the gang green gang trapping nuts inside of pinatas, and Bubbles needs to break them open so the squirrels can eat. Given that Bubbles' unique superpower is her ability to speak Spanish, this is what that minigame teaches. You need to hit a specific pinata depending on what the Spanish word is. I think it's hilarious though that Bubbles thought the need to wear a blindfold. This game is not nearly as fun as the last one, and I can see kids growing bored of this game rather quickly. I do love though how these are almost like lost episodes of the TV show. The next mini game is Alpha Blanks. It's kind of a Wheel of Fortune type game, just, you know, without the wheel. Johnny is apparently in trouble with some girls and you have to answer all the secret words or else they beat him up. What's weird about this game is the only hint you get is that the answers are in the episodes, but there are a lot of episodes and a lot of things in them. How am I supposed to know that this word is top secret or that, that word is chick magnet? Final game is a Frosted Flakes game with Tony the Tiger. You're shown two images and simply have to spot the differences between the two. Pretty straightforward and standard game. Well, that's about it for Disc 1. Let's go ahead and continue on to Disc 2 now, this time featuring the Powerpuff Girls. Unfortunately, with the exception of the episodes, everything on this disc is the same as Disc 1. 
So we'll just jump right into the episode, starting with the Kids Next Door episode, Teeth. This episode shows the kids next door investigating a strange case in which kids were getting attacked and receiving an unwanted teeth cleaning. It is revealed that it is the villain Nightbrace, a dentist who was forced to work at a candy shop and see kids rotting their mouths, and decided to do something about it. He is, at the end, defeated at the hands of the kids next door. Next up is the Ed and Eddie episode, The Ed Touchables, in which we follow the Eds as they try to find out who has been taking the belongings of the kids in the cul-de-sac. After torturing him, Johnny 2x4 says that he was the one who took everything. However, later, everyone finds their stuff by themselves and realize it was all just a misunderstanding. The final episode on Disc 2 is the Powerpuff Girls episode, Him Diddle Riddle. The girls find themselves in the middle of a battle of wits with him, as they have to answer a series of riddles in order to win. He kidnaps the professor, however it's revealed that he's at him's restaurant, and simply if the girls answered all of his riddles, the professor would get a free meal. Moving right along to disc 3, with Courage the Cowardly Dog on the disc. What's interesting to note here is usually whatever cartoon is on the cover of the disc is the one that's kept behind the Solve the Mystery Vault. On this disc, however, the Courage episode is actually one of the side episodes, and the episode behind the mystery door is Dexter's Laboratory. So let's start off with the Courage episode, The Mask. A mysterious female appears in the middle of nowhere, and Muriel lets her be a guest at their house. After she shares her sad backstory, Courage decides to investigate. He takes her toy mouse that was given to her by someone close to her and decides to go find him. Courage finds himself at a rundown hotel taken over by savage dogs. Courage finds the mysterious female's friend who is being abused by one of the dogs and decides to rescue her. The mysterious female, who turns out to be a cat, finally catches up to Courage who just finished rescuing Bunny who, as it's revealed, is her lover. Very fittingly, next we have the Johnny Bravo episode, Noir Bravo. Johnny meets up with little Susie who has lost her doll. She persuades Johnny into helping her as she says that women love private investigators. After a series of interrogations, Johnny encounters a beautiful woman who he believes might know something. Later, as Johnny goes into a toy shop, he finds that same woman stealing dolls from that shop. Funnily enough, after getting her dolly back, little Susie ends up throwing it away anyway because it got dirty. Lastly on disc 3 is the Dexter's Laboratory episode, Unfortunate Cookie. Inside a box of fortune cookies, Dee Dee finds a Chinese finger trap and gets stuck to Dexter. Despite all his efforts, Dexter can't remove it. They venture to Chinatown in hopes of finding someone who can help them take it off. They meet an old man who will only help them remove it if they help him do some jobs, which are revealed to just be his errands, and he follows through on his promise. Now we're making our way right along to Disc 4, decorated with Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Starting off with a Kids Next Door episode, Point. Number one in the gang hear whisperings of a place that tons of teenagers are going to called The Point, and decide to spy on them. Turns out, the point is just a skating rink for teenagers to hang out in. Next up is the Dexter's Laboratory episode, Photo Finish. Dee Dee got a new camera and can't stop taking pictures of Dexter and other things in his lab. He kicks her out, but fears she may show the pictures she took of his laboratory to other people. Dee Dee leaves with her mom to go get their pictures developed. After a long and complicated chase sequence, he makes it to where he believes his pictures went. As it turns out, none of the photos came out clearly, so you couldn't see anything in them. The final episode on Disc 4 is the classic Ed and Eddie episode, If It Smells Like an Egg. The episode begins with the cul-de-sac kids singing about friendship, only to get their moments spoiled by the Eds. Eddie gives Jimmy a wedgie and embarrasses him in front of everybody. Meanwhile, somebody is stealing belongings to others in the cul-de-sac, and so the Eds decide to investigate. It comes to realization that it was merely Jimmy enacting his revenge on Eddie. And finally, we're on disc 5. Hopefully we can put an end to this mystery. 
First up is the Courage episode, The Tower of Doctors Lost. The doctor in question has created an unhappy cannonball and has decided to let it loose in nowhere. Courage decides to go to his castle with some of Muriel's happy plums in an attempt to stop the doctor. Courage manages to make his own cannonball using the plums and uses it on the doctor, who becomes happy at the end. Next up is the Powerpuff Girls episode, Catman Do. Our girls find themselves up against the toughest enemy yet, a house cat. They stumble upon him during one of their superhero jobs and take him home. However, that cat ends up using some form of mind control on the professor and uses him to build an energy beam that will turn every human into servants of cats around the world. The girls end up saving the professor and the evil cat gets stuck in a tree. And last but not least, we have the Kids Next Door episode, Ice Cream. We find our heroes in a high-speed chase sequence with an ice cream truck. They end up receiving a password to get into the ice cream factory, but it was all a trap set up by the delightful children from down the lane. They have to fight a giant ice cream monster, and they end up defeating it by just turning on the heater. As a result, the Kids Next Door come flooding down the street, literally, with ice cream for all the kids to enjoy. So that's it. Considering they came free packaged in cereal boxes, came loaded with extra features like wallpapers, mini games, and episodes from your favorite cartoons, I'd say that these were pretty great. But why did I have to watch these? All right, Scooby, I finished watching the CD-ROMs. Now, can you go and leave me alone? <laughs> uh, why are you haunting me? <sighs> Wait a minute. The DVDs. The answer has to be in the DVDs. I just can't seem to figure anything out. You know, I, I don't understand how a mystery solving game from 2004 it could be this cryptic. Wait a minute. The numbers mini game. 31. Okay, so 31 and the discs. There's three episodes on each disc. So 3, 31, 3.31, a date? Could it be a date? 3.31? And the discs came out in 2004, so uh, March 31st, 2004? Did something come out that day? I'm not seeing anything. Wait a minute, the second mini game. Uh, Bubbles teaching Spanish, Mexico. That must mean that in March 31st of 2004, something must have come out in Mexico. Scooby-Doo 2? Monsters Unleashed? But I don't get it. I... No. Could it be? The second Kellogg sweepstakes? Congratulations, you've been chosen to win the 2005 Kellogg Sweepstakes. Rory, I'm late. Ruben believe the traffic. Happy Halloween, everyone.
What's going on everybody? I really just wanted to tell everybody thank you so much for watching this video. It really means a lot to me because we spent so much time and spent so much effort into this video. This was definitely a huge video and it's the first on the channel with more to come. So if you guys liked it, please be sure to subscribe and click the bell. That way you get notified every time I upload a video. Like I said, we, re we really worked really hard on this video. And if you guys liked it, please go ahead, share it around. Let all your friends see it. And um, tell them that if they want to see more, go ahead and subscribe as well. Thank you guys again so much for watching it. See you later.